Thai offense called homosexuality. This thing, it is only a debate out there in the greater fields of America and New York and things like that. In the real world, which is the world that exists around Yah, God, there is no debate. And so the Lord began to give me titles like, a man is not a woman. And he began to exp um, expand to me in very disturbing dreams and even more disturbing downloads of what the future will be like when we push back the boundaries and start allowing all sorts of things. God began to open up what exactly happens when a society says that the natural order of things is not acceptable because the natural order is too exclusivist and it's not accepting and it's not diverse enough. Is it possible for us to mistake license for freedom. License is when you just want to do anything and everything, whenever, whatever, with no limits. But freedom is not like that. Freedom is given to us in God. That is, God has established boundaries. God has established rules. And the reason he has done that is because he is the only person that we found living when we got here. He is the only one that has no beginning and no end. And therefore he has full prerogative, since this is also the world that he made, to say what his expectations for the world that he made should be and how the world that he made is to be operated, stewarded, because humanity is here as a guest. Yes, it was made for us, but we are stewards of what has been given to us, how it should be operated, how it should be stewarded, and the condition that he was expecting to get it back in, which of course he won't be getting it back in that condition. And that is why, as um, Apostle Peter said, the earth and everything that is in it is reserved for fire. That means that the end of everything that we hold dear Everything that comprises our world is going to be consumed by fire that the Lord will send in the final times. And so God was taking a very pointed look at homosexuality, lesbianism, trans, um, the fact that people hide their sexuality nowadays because it's definitely gained a ton of momentum, but it's still not widely accepted in a lot of places. It is still criminalized in a lot of places, homosexuality and, and having a transgender life. But here in America... Um, as I have covered in multiple prophecies over the last few years, America is, America is ful fulfilling her role in the Bible. And I think that this is something that Christians that live here struggle with. They ask questions that display that they don't have an understanding of what prophecy actually is. Some prophecy is conditional, meaning that if you do certain things, you can change it. If you repent in a certain way, you can change it. Some prophecy is just objective. It's observational. It is something that is already decreed. It is something that is going to happen. You can't change it. And one of the most immutable prophecies, one of the most forever will never change prophecies is Revelation 18. Nothing in the book of Revelation is changing. Not a single sentence in that book is going to fail. In fact, God values that book so highly that the book opens up by saying that you will get a blessing just for reading it. There are a ton of people who have never gotten that blessing because they've never cracked that book because they have been told that it's not relevant because the church will not be here for anything that's happening in there. And so there is that. But Revelation 18, as long as God is God, Revelation 18 is not going anywhere. And Revelation 18 is talking about the utter demolition and destruction and annihilation of a certain nation, a certain end times player called Mystery Babylon. And so all the things that we are seeing now is America living up to her role in this end times movie. And therefore it behooves Christians. If you want to enjoy some measure of rest, if you want to enjoy some measure of peace, if you want to exit that thumping heart lifestyle and come into the meadow where God can comfort you, one of the first things that you will have to understand is that when people are fulfilling prophetic destiny, there is nothing that you can do about it. Absolutely nothing. You can pray, you can fast, you can talk to them. You will be dealing with brass, iron, metal rods in their spirit, in their ears, in their minds, and nothing will change that. So when I ask the Lord, what is your heart in this prophecy? Today's message is about transsexuals, for that is what God calls them. He does not call them transgender. God is not part of the gender debate. God speaks in terms of sexuality, and there are just two sexes, the male and the female. Gender is another construct, because once you create a second anteroom to an existing room, then you can go in that room and try to manipulate reality. You won't succeed but I did say try, and trying itself is a process that brings about results. So in this prophecy, God was not talking about people who are in homosexual lifestyles, even though many transsexuals are. He was talking about the fact that 
a man can never be a woman. And this statement has appeared in many of the prophecies about hybridism. He always talks about the, the desire that will hit this nation in particular for people to become asexual. They will say that they're asexual, and some do say that they're asexual now, but they will prove it to us by cutting off their genitalia. People are going to relieve themselves of every external sign that makes them male or makes them female. They're going to hack at this body until the body has no choice but to expire because unknown to them who have never created a body before, every single piece on us matters. And the unfortunate among us who suffer damage to their pieces are witnesses to how difficult and different life is when any piece stops functioning. But as you may have heard in a previous prophecy, God says that this particular subset of people, men sleeping with men, women sleeping with women, people of bestial preferences, you want to sleep with animals as if they look like a fitting partner for a human being that God made, and transsexual, men crossing the boundary to live and act and claim that they are women, women crossing the boundary to live and act and claim that they are men. The Lord says that the end, the root of all this is pride. Pride. It is the reprobate mind that you can find in the book of Romans chapter 1 from about verses 18 all the way down when it's listing the sin. But from verse 18, it, start to, it starts to describe a certain type of person. And that is the person who will not honor God in their mind. So you hear the word of God and then you have caveats, you have exit ramps, you have extra doors. You want to know, but yes, but what about? So um, on that second platform that's here, you lose access to this. You distance yourself from this over time. And then because this is all life, this word of God, this is where all benefit rests. This is where all truth is held. Why? Because God said that he will preserve his words from this generation eternally. And I taught on that. And I said, the meaning of that scripture means that whatever generation hears, God says, I will preserve my words from you eternally. He means that my words are encased in a place so high, so distant, so great, so perfect, so flawless that even if you throw rocks at it all day long, my words are immortal. It is you that will die in your hubris, your pride. And my words will continue on for another generation who may accept them or reject them just as you did, but it, it will stay as it is forever. So this pride is going to hurt people. And God was just showing me different ways that people in homosexuality, long-term homosexuality, God says, if you don't come out, your family will bury you. He says, we are in the time of dual pain. The one who is passing away will be feeling the pain of life cut short. The family who tolerated this, the family who, especially those families that supported these little children to get blockers and stunted growth and start transitioning them at age five and all kinds of things, dressing them wrongly, fostering and encouraging this mindset that is coming from somewhere in the very young. It is not coming from pride. It is always, almost always coming from a very early access into sexuality of these little ones. Someone has touched them. Someone has abused them. Someone has molested them. And that creates soul wounds through which these iron plated princes of homosexuality and gender confusion, as it is called, enter in. They nest in the child the same way these weevils nest in corn. And then when the child begins to grow up and show awareness, these things begin to show themselves. And this is why so many people adhere to the born this way doctrine. I have no idea who's going to find this video. You find this video, you may get offended. You may be about to click off. No, my brother wasn't mistaken. He's been like that since he were two. Do you exist in the spiritual realm to know what happens even to children in vitro? Do you know that some of these children that are born with severe self-esteem issues, children who just never speak, is because if you look further up the chain, when that living person was in the womb, the father was abusing the mother and telling her, I don't want this child. I do not want this child. I want you to get rid of it. And these words that were spoken create what is called spiritual rejection. And that passes into that child as sure as DNA also passes into the child. There is an entire higher world of spiritual things that the majority of people have no clue about. God has never opened it to them. Their relationship with God is as shallow as you want. And so he cannot come to them and teach them higher things. And so, of course, at their level, they will say, it is not so. My brother was like this since he was two. You have no idea what these iron-plated demons can do even to the unborn. And I will just leave it at that. Today's prophecy is a man can never be a woman. August the 5th, 2022. 
The scripture is this, Deuteronomy 22 and 5, A woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord. And God said to me, There are more men in this gay life and trans life than the normal person can ever understand. And this is what I alluded to in the beginning, that the middle months of this year, this year they challenged me. They challenged me because the Lord took me into, I won't even call it the underbelly, I would just say the upper to medium depths, of how many people are hiding their sexuality in this country and around the world. I was stunned. I was stunned into silence. I was stunned into grappling with the difficult reality that there is homosexuality in the church. You might look at me and think, what is she? Yes, I look right back at you. I can remember just one major scandal in my lifetime and we all know who that is and how it went, how it rocked that man's church and how he eventually lost his life at the end of it dying in denial that it was not true. But for God to come and peel back this reality and say, do you actually know how many of these pastors are dressing up? Feminine when they are home. How many businessmen in America? The Lord showed me this vision. It's in one of these videos, the difficult videos on the sodomy ritual where um, a woman, very wealthy, nothing lacking, decided just to drop in to her husband who was working at this top, top place. This man was a CEO of something majorly successful. She decided, you know what? I'm just going to drop in and see if he's available for lunch or just give him a kiss on the cheek and tell him I'll be home for dinner. And this socialite wife dropped in and um, didn't, the secretary in the front either didn't see her or wasn't able to stop her in time. And she moved down the hallway and came to find the door cracked to find her husband with a man, and the man never saw her because they were in the act. She saw it through the door and she stepped back and she walked away. And the Lord was telling me, I bet you think that it would end that she'd leave him. The Lord said, these women don't leave. It's devastating to them. It is devastating to a woman to marry a man only to find that the man wanted to marry your brother. Same thing the other way around. But he said that a lot of people make trade-offs in this life, Celestial. And so I was learning these things, eating like an obedient sheep from the hand of my father, who feeds me the kind of grass that many people fight against because they feel that Christianity is some sanitized tide pod where the bad things never happen or the bad things do happen, but we should keep the details cloudy to preserve the peace of mind of the sheep. Well, I venture respectfully that the sheep's peace of mind is the reason the church is a mess in the first place. So... There are more men in the gay and trans life than a normal person can ever understand. The Lord said, if the depth of this life were to be uncovered to America, the ordinary person would faint. He said, we would scream and we would not believe it. And I've certainly seen that kind of response when I'm talking about these things. He said, it is their father, brother, husband, boyfriend, boss, best friend who is on chat boards like this one and millions of others like it. They are on those chat boards for fun, to alleviate loneliness, to secretly express themselves. They're there for relief. They're there to get a sense of family. They are there for a sense of belonging. They are there to perfect their knowledge on how to create a whole new identity as a woman. I hope you now understand what God was talking about centuries ago in Deuteronomy 22, that a man should not put on what pertains to a woman. He's not talking about britches on a female or just hair on a male. This is rejecting the Adamic identity to take on Eve-likeness and rejecting Eve-ness to take on the Adamic nature. And now Satan... That serpent that comes in like a little tendril and that tendril strengthens to a vine and then the vine becomes a strong root and that root goes around the neck and begins to lift up those who do these things. Never think that the end of it's just this one time, it's just a little bit, I'm just curious. There are people in their graves that curiosity took them there. Somebody passed them a little something mixed with something. Everybody else had taken two puffs. They took their first and went plain out of their mind. They took their puff and right after that came emergency rescue services, cardiac arrest, inability to resuscitate, and a family left devastated going, I need you four to tell me what happened here. That's the only closure some people can get. Gathering up the other four who weren't harmed and telling them some better, somebody better start talking. What happened to my kid? We don't know. We don't know, Mrs. Johnson. It was just a little this and that. Guess what? That fifth person had no tolerance for a little curiosity. A little, let's see what happens next. It is so dangerous when we don't perfect obedience in the things of God and then we think 
because this is the cancer in the church today. We think our little relationship with Jesus is so strong that, you know, it'll weather anything. I look at people and I just, I just marvel. Christianity is open to all. It is a group sport. And at the same time, yes, it is intensely personal, but whoever falls into that pit of thinking, no, it's just me and my Jesus. Who's going to come into that bubble to perfect all the gaps that you're unable to download from your Jesus. Don't you know that you are at the mercy of everything he hasn't told you that yet? because you don't have the ability to download it for yourself and we're running out of time. And that's why he has places for you to learn it. Many don't know that. They're perishing because their cup is full. And nothing is more perishing than coming to the place where you think that the infrastructure you were given at birth is faulty, flawed, and all you're doing is working with the doctors and working with these butchers of death to push these pills and these transplants and these surgeries until you are left with an edifice that is failing, falling, corrupted, and striking you back for pride. God says that people should repent because the rot inside America is great. The whole thing is rotten. Let me read. The whole head of the nation is sick and her body putrid. Putrid means that you're not just rotten, but you are giving off a stink, a great stink. And that's why I will destroy it. That's why I will destroy it. Because America is rotten. And she is like these transsexuals. For a long time, this country excelled in hiding the rot. But now she can't anymore. Many people are disturbed and they're wondering, where is this rise of sin coming from? This sin was always there. It's just that social media and also the internet kept the sin in the homes. These men have always been keeping these children in the basement and raping them, dear Christians. They've always been touching their daughters and their sons. The only reason it seems to be an explosion, yes, there is an increase in spiritual wickedness. The devil is def definitely amping up his available staff. But at the same time, the rot is being exposed because now knowledge has increased. And with it, the unfortunate fact that when you go online these days, half the postings are about missing people, people found with parts chopped off. People saying that they're in love with their father. And that they're not leaving him, so their mother better get used to it. The Lord said that these websites have bankers on them, high-powered executives, moguls from every walk of life. He said people who are running companies that control this world. We are talking about these massive conglomerates here in America. He said at the top, the wind is blowing the other way for a lot of these men and women. They're on there, he said, looking for advice on how to wear heels. And he said because these sites are anonymous. That's why these people feel brave to share because you can just sign yourself up as rubber ducky one, two, three and ask anything you want. And nobody's going to trace it back to that highly protected server sitting right in the middle of Manhattan and know that the CEO of that company actually likes to wear brassiers. He said, there's ordinary people on these websites too. They are teenagers that are aching to be accepted, but they can never confess to the football team just how much they enjoy being in the locker room with the guys when they're all naked and about to take a shower. He said, even caregivers who molest their patients because the patients are weak or sometimes the patient can't move and they're trusting you to wash that person. Family is trusting you to care for that person. God says that all these people are in the gay life, the download life. Gay means open about it. Download means definitely in it or seeking to be in it, but hiding it. And trans, meaning you're not even trying to be kind with kind. You're basically crossing over to the other sex and saying, no, I'm not even with you men who want men. I'm a, I'm a whole woman. This is America's face now. This is America's agenda. This is America's mission. There is a reason that the Lord brought that other prophecy called the hermaphrodite army. What do armies do, Christians? They go to war. Why do you think that many of you feel as if you are fainting in the face of an onslaught? Because an army is coming at you. And guess where that army arose from? Your own homes. These are your children. These are your sister's children. And she's so torn between telling them the Bible truth and trying to be their friend that she's opting to fight you and tell you that you're being harsh, you're being judgmental, and she didn't ask you for an advice. You raise your kids, I'll raise mine. She's so hurt. But her mistake is that she thinks that pain trumps Jesus. She really does. She thinks that the pain that she's in is greater than falling on her knees and confessing to Jesus, I missed it. I'm about to lose this kid, help me. She's choosing the kid over the Lord. And how can he reward her for that? How can he commend her for that? She's already in sin. And that sin can be found in Romans chapter 1 and verse 32. And that is how I'm going to end this video.